वेलकम बैक प्रॉब्लम वन डैश नाइन्टी टू दिस प्रॉब्लम इज टेकन फ्रॉम चैप्टर नंबर वन दैट इज स्ट्रेस एंड बुक नेम इज मैकेनिक्स ऑफ मटीरियल बाय आर सी हिबलर सो स्टेटमेंट इज इफ अलाउेबल बेरिंग स्ट्रेस फॉर द मटीरियल अंडर द सपोर्ट एट ए एंड बी इज वन पॉइंट फाइव मेगा पासकल डिटरमाइन द मैक्मम लोड पी दैट कैन बी अप्लाइड टू द बीम द बेरिंग प्लेट्स एट ए डैश एंड बी डैश हैव स्क्वेयर क्रॉस सेक्शन ऑफ वन फिफ्टी बाई वन फिफ्टी millimeter and 250 millimeter by 250 millimeter respectively so you can see this is the beam clear having support a and b and there is a bearing plate a dash and b dash at this support there is a uniformly distributed load over length of 1.5 meter and you the cross sectional area of a dash is 150 by 150 millimeter and at b it is 250 by 250 millimeter. So you have to find the greatest load or maximum load that can be applied on this beam. So let's start with the solution. So what will be the first step? The first step is that if you remove this support at point A, so you will be having a reaction force. Let this reaction force is N A that is offered by this support on the beam. And if you remove this support at B, so it will offer a vertical reaction force on this beam and let this will be N B. So we'll find this N A and N B by using equation of equilibrium. So what will be the equation of equilibrium? So first equation of equilibrium is that sum of all moment about point A is equal to zero and taking the counterclockwise moment as positive. So you can see here there is a uniformly distributed load. So when converted into a point load, so it will be 40 multiplied by the length over which it acts. And it will act at a distance half of this length, which is 1.5 divided by 2 is 0 0.75 meter. So first we will convert this uniformly distributed load into point load. So it will be equal to 40 multiplied by the length over which it acts. And the unit will be kilo newton. And that will act at half of this 1.5. So this distance will be 0 0.75 meter. Okay. Now we'll apply equation of equilibrium about point A, sum of all moment about point A. So first moment about point A is due to this NA and perpendicular distance is 3 meter. And this is producing counterclockwise moment. So it will be positive. So I will write NB multiply by 3 meter the second moment that is produced due to this uniformly distributed load when converted into point load it will be this one and perpendicular distance is 0 0.75 and it is also producing counterclockwise moment so it will be positive so i will write 40 multiply by 1.5 and the perpendicular distance is 0 0.75 the last moment that is produced due to this P load and perpendicular distance will be 4.5. And this is producing clockwise moment, so it will be negative. So I can write minus P times 4.5 is equal to 0. So from here you will get 3NB. The second term will give you 4 plus 45 and minus 4.5 times P is equal to zero so 3 and b is equal to 4.5 times p minus 45 and if you divide 3 on both sides so you will get n b will be equal to 1.5 p minus 15 clear so this is the the vertical reaction force of the support b on the beam clear now we'll find uh, this uh, reaction force at point A. So for that, I will apply another equation of equilibrium that sum of all moment about point B is equal to zero and taking the counterclockwise moment as positive. So first moment will be due to this force and now perpendicular distance is this one, which is 3.75 and it is producing counterclockwise moment. So it will be positive. So I will write 40 multiplied by 1.5 and perpendicular distance is 3.75. The second moment about point B is due to this NA and perpendicular distance is 3 meter and this is producing clockwise moment so it will be negative. So I will write minus 3 times NA and the last moment is due to this P load and perpendicular distance is 1.5 
and this is producing uh, clockwise moment so it will be also negative so i will write minus p times 1.5 is equal to 0 so what we will get here is the first term will give you 225 minus 3 and a minus 1.5 times p is equal to 0 so 3 and a will be equal to 225 minus 1.5 times p and again if you divide 3 on both sides so you will get n a will be equal to 75 minus 0 0.5 times p and this is the vertical reaction offered by support a on the beam now we have these two beams so according to newton law the same load will be transferred to this bearing plate there at point a and at point b so what we will calculate we will calculate the p load for plate a we will calculate p load for plate at a dash we know that allowable bearing stress at point a dash or at bearing plate a dash is equal to n a divided by area of that bearing plate at a dash and n a is equal to 75 minus 0 0.5 times p its unit will be kilonewton because p is in kilonewton so the unit will be kilonewton so we will convert that kilonewton into newton so that will be multiplied by 10 raised to the power 3 divided by area of the plate which is a dash and that is equal to 0 0.150 multiplied by 0 0.150 allowable bearing stress is given as 1.5 megapascal so i will write 1.5 into 10 raised to the power 6 is equal to 75 minus 0 0.5 times p multiply by 10 is to power 3 divided by 0 0.150 square so from here you will get 1.5 into 10 is to power 3 because you can see here this is 10 is to power 3 so it will be 10 is to power 3 and if you bring it upwards so 6 minus 3 will be 10 is to power 3 clear and we will multiply it with 0 0.150 square will be equal to 75 minus 0 0.5 times p so from here you will get 0 0.5 times p will be equal to 75 uh, 75 minus 1.5 into 10 to the power 3 multiplied by 0 0.150 square now 0 0.5 times p is equal to 75 and the second term will give you 33.75 and that will be equal to 41.25 divide 0 0.5 on both sides so you will get p will be equal to 82.5 kilo newton so this is the load that is applied to the beam for the plate at point a dash a bearing plate at a dash now what we will calculate we will calculate p load for plate at b dash and we will apply the same procedure allowable bending stress at plate b will be b dash will be equal to nb divided by area of bearing plate at b dash so nb is 1.5 times p minus 15 divided by area of bearing plate at b is 0 0.25 multiplied by 0 0.250 so 0 0.250 multiplied by 0 0.250 so from here allowable bearing stress is 1.5 megapascal which is 1.5 into 10 to the power 6 is equal to 1.5 times p minus 15 and there will be the unit is in kilonewton so we will multiply 10 to the power 3 to convert it into newton divide by 0 0.250 square so when you solve this you will get 1.5 into 10 to the power 3 
divide by multiply by 0 0.250 square is equal to 1.5 times p minus 15 so what we will get is that 1.5 times p is equal to 1.5 into 10 to the power 3 multiply by 0 0.250 square plus 15 So this 1.5 into 10 to the power 3 multiplied by 0 0.250 will yield us 93.75 plus 15 will be equal to 1.5 times P. So 1.5 times P will be equal to 108.75 and if you divide 1.5 on both sides so you will get P will be equal to 72.5 kilo Newton. Now you can see this P load is applied on bearing plate at B. So this is one load is this one and other one is this one. So what we will that we will choose the largest load P that can be applied on beam is P is equal to 72.5 kilo Newton because this is the safer load that can be applied what if I applied this load so again it will be if you apply this load so it will increase the uh, allowable bearing stress at plate B dash so the safer load is this one Again, if you put this value, so your, uh, your bearing stress at plate A will be less than this allowable bearing stress at A. And that was all about this problem 1-92. I hope you have enjoyed this video and you have learned from it. Those who are new to my channel, then subscribe it. And don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get notification about my latest videos. If you have any question, you can ask me in comment section. Thank you for watching.